Our next uh, two presenters, John Wick is a rat rancher. Uh, here's John, and director and steering committee uh, of the Marin Carbon Project. And uh, joining him is Dr. Jeffrey Creek, just like it looks. Uh, is uh, archaeology, mill supervision, agroecology, agro I can't read. Uh, and uh, spent uh, 26 years at Laughing Duck Farm on the Point Reyes National Seashore. What a beautiful place. We're here to tell you about the Marine Carbon Project, and, and um, I'd like to start with some background on, on who I am. In uh, the 1998, my wife and I bought a ranch in Marin County, California, north of San Francisco. It's 540 acres of grassland. It's next door to the National Seashore, and it's uh, um, primarily uh, grass oak woodland. Uh, annual oats are the dominant grass type. And our neighbors graze it uh, conventionally. The, the surrounding lands are grazed conventionally. Some background, my wife and I are, were environmentalists and leave it alone wilderness people. The first thing we did was kick off the cattle off of our ranch and put up a very strong perimeter fence to keep our neighbors' cattle out. Um, they liked our grass. And then over the next few years, we watched our ranch turn into a coyote bush covered, thatchy, weedy mess. And this was a surprise to us, but we did recognize that we had actually done something uh, wrong with our, our ranch and um, started to deal, deal with weeds. So this was our Christmas card one year. Um, after pulling weeds and um, spraying weeds, we ended up with a strategy of mowing weeds, and uh, we advanced that up to larger and larger equipment. <laughs> So I, I currently have a 21-foot wide batwing mower, but um, at one point, a few years ago, we had the good fortune of Jeff Creek visiting our ranch, and he was the first one to propose that we actually had something nice going on on the ranch that we didn't need to kill, and it was perennial native grasses. So we became native grass enthusiasts and started looking around our ranch, and we actually saw um, that we were um, managing a coastal prairie system. Jeff also suggested that we needed to graze this ranch. Now, we were not cattle enthusiasts. I eat meat, I love beef, but our choice was to go with elk because those were the native grazers in our grassland systems. And our next door neighbor, the National Seashore, had a herd of elk. And so we, we talked to them and they agreed if we secured additional land and put up a 12-foot fence, they would help us import a herd of elk. So we started that process until the California Department of Fish and Game heard about it, and they said, no, you're not going to do that. You need 100,000 contiguous acres, 12 foot, or no fences, and permission from all your neighbors. So <laughs> cattle started looking really good to us. <laughs> we had a, a, a dear friend who has a herd of uh, Hereford Angus, and he's out on the seashore, and his grass comes in later than ours. And, and we, we struck a deal with him where we could borrow his whole herd as a management tool to promote our native grasses. And we, we proceeded to uh, strategize how we might do that. We, we inspected our ranch and figured out just the best time to bring them on. And we did. So after they arrived, I now am a, a cow manager, I guess. And my, my contract with them is I provide them access to good green grass, water, salt, minerals, safety, and they eat. And they ate everything except the weeds. So here I am again, weeds. Uh, my wife read an article in, um, in Colorado, it was a woman, Kathy Voth, who had the um, strategy of teaching cows to eat weeds. So we brought her out, and the first thing she did was have us analyze the weeds, and it turns out the, the thing that we've been fighting was more nutritious than alfalfa. So. Our weeds are not from our area. The cows are not from our area. We just introduced them to each other, and it seems to be working out pretty well. <laughs> After a couple of years of this now, we've actually seen a change in our grassland system, and we're getting a, a really healthy population of the native perennial grasses. And it's becoming quite beautiful, and we're really <laughs> pleased with what's happened through grazing management. One of Jeff's suggestions was to start harvesting the nutrition on the floors of our valleys and distributing it on the ridge tops along with water. And I know Greg Judy talks about not haying, and um, I get that. We're, we're not planting hay here. This is just my native grass, and we, we're using it as a, a way to get our nutrient cycle going. 
Um, and then if, if you want to ask questions later, um, I don't want to go on a tangent here, but ask me about tractors, my holistic goal, and being sexy. <laughs> so this is, this is the, the process here. I basically move the hay up to the ridge tops and feed it out up there. And um, Jeff has been suggesting a lot of reading, and one of the books that I read was the Holistic Management book. And, and we had the fortune of having Abe Collins come out and do a holistic management plan for our ranch with us, where we broke the property into 85 different breaks based on the quality of the forage and the soil type. And then we began a program over the next couple of years of moving this fairly large herd through this landscape um, quite frequently, sometimes four hours at a time, but never more than three days. And um, this is an example here. Uh, I moved them off. This is photograph one hour after removing them, and this is one week later. So we see a phenomenal amount of recovery. And because of that, we're able to actually measure the growth, the regrowth. And this is a Danthonia, which is a native perennial and one of our favorite plants. That three-quarter inch growth happened in 10 days. And that never would have happened had we left the cows on the field to continue visiting that plant, because this is actually ice cream to them. They love this grass. The other thing we're seeing now is an explosion of the native wildflowers. And the, it's just a stunning thing to see the change in our landscape once we introduced grazing in this managed way. We also have eagles now, which we had never had before. So um, it's, it's working. It's a pretty nice thing. And if a herd elk happened to walk over, I don't think I'd kick them off. One of the other uh, reading suggestions of Jeff's was P.A. Yeoman's work with key line design and rainwater harvesting. And, and in our area, uh, Darren Doherty visited. And during his presentation, he made this, this amazing statement that a 1.6% increase in the organic matter on the arable land on Earth would stop and reverse global warming within a decade. That's a pretty compelling thing, since we, we were pretty confident we were increasing our organic matter a lot more than that, and we'll talk about that. So for me to understand what that meant, I had to do, to do some reading and get a sense of what the carbon pools and carbon cycling and photosynthesis were. So what we have here, this is from the IPCC in 2007, so these numbers may actually be old, but what we're talking about is photosynthesis as this solar-powered pump that ships carbon between pools. So we take atmospheric CO2, transform it into carbon, carbohydrates in plants, and some of that carbon then ends up in the soil system. It's a pretty phenomenal thing. It's covering the Earth. Um, there are, are four pools represented here, the ocean and the atmosphere pool. I don't think, at least in, in my world, I can't manage for that, the interchange between the atmosphere and the ocean. Fossil fuel consumption on a global scale is, is a big one. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to reduce my fossil fuel emissions. But on the photosynthesis level, in the biosphere and atmosphere, this is something I can do. And that's, that's a lot of what our project is about. 